Hello everyone, this is going to be a video looking at the inundation mapping to help you get an idea of uh, where you can gain information about flooding so when we do make a forecast you'll be able to uh, quickly know whether or not you're going to be impacted in your area. So this is the water.noaa.gov slash gauges slash MNDA2 site. This is the Mendenhall River near Ock Bay. Uh, there are two ways to get to the inundation mapping. First off, you're on this side where you can take a look at all things Mendenhall River. Scroll down to click here for Suicide Basin Monitoring page. That takes you to our Suicide Basin Monitoring and Conditions uh, page. You can also get to it the, this way from weather.gov slash Juno and then Rivers and Lakes Suicide Basin Monitoring page. Either way, once you get to this page, Juno Glacial Flood Dashboard takes you to this page. A lot of folks have been involved with putting this particular page uh, together. It's kind of mainly uh, backed up by University of Alaska Southeast. But if you scroll down, lots of partners, lots of groups are involved in this uh, All Things Gloff. So from here, click on Flood Maps up here in the upper left. And that will load a map. And from here, you can see... Uh, based on measurements made about wh if whether or not you would be impacted by the flooding. So you just zoom in on your neighborhood. Let's say you live just to the north of Thunder Mountain High School there, and you can zoom in on your house or your neighborhood and you'll be able to tell if you uh, could be impacted by the flooding. So this particular level, this yellow color, is for when the Mendenhall Lake is at nine feet. And all you do is just click on the plus or the minus button, and that changes the lake level. So you can go all the way up to, let's say, 16 feet. This is where the flooding was last year. We topped out at 15.99 in 2024. And so this is what the flooding uh, would have looked like based on the measuring uh, in the area. And we can turn the HESCO barriers on and off to tell the difference difference between the two. So the HESCO bears are put up in place. So you can see there's a big difference in whether or not uh, the flooding happens. But if you're not in this area, you just find your neighborhood and go to the lake level that you want to keep an eye on and then turn the HESCO bears on and off to tell whether or not you'd be impacted by the flooding. And notice here, above 18 feet, that's when the HESCO barrier option doesn't uh, uh, change there. It's just going to be, uh, that's where the flooding would be maximized there at 20 feet. And you can zoom in on your neighborhood, but whether or not you would be impacted. And then from there, you can use that information to go to make decisions on if you need to prepare based on the forecast. So, Fast forward, when we make the forecast, let's say we have, a, we have a forecast of 17 feet. Well, you can zoom in on 17 feet, zoom in on your neighborhood and say, well, the Hesco barriers are up. Looks like I may be good, but other areas might start to see some flooding in. And if you hover your mouse over, you can see a water depth estimates there, about three feet, one to three feet still in this area. So this is just a way to gain information about uh, taking the fo forecast and then turn it into whether or not you would be impacted. So once again, this is Juno. The, this is the JunoFlood.com site. You can get to it from our Suicide Basin Monitoring page. Click on Juno Glacial Flood Dashboard to learn more.